Hi, Kevin. So where I would like to start is, I think it was around 2006, maybe even earlier, uh, when the band first became part of kind of your world. Uh, what were your first impressions of, of what they were doing? Um, basically, I met the band in Tunis. Um, I was playing with my previous band, which is Adagio. It's an uh, old uh, French uh, symphonic band. Sure. Um, and we were opening for Robert Plant. And just before Adagio was playing a little, little young band uh, from Tunisia called Ecstasy. And in fact, it was four of the band members of Miras. And uh, what it interested me about the performance is even if it, it was not really professional, I could first, uh, for the first time, uh, listen to um, metal with oriental influences, but the, the good way. I mean, uh, for example, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of symphonics and they are doing a lot of oriental arrangement. But then I realized that it was from the root. I mean, the real <laughs> oriental uh, arrangements. So it was really interesting. And, and interesting. It was not marketed. It was long. They, they were they were playing a long ten minute uh, songs with a lot of progressive stuff. Not very well constructed, but in fact, I, I have been really interested in working uh, working with them, and I proposed to work with them. Uh, and I told them, guys, um, if you change your name and we hire a real singer i'm in and uh, i'm willing to to work with you and everything everything began this way okay and very quickly how familiar were you with uh, middle eastern or arabic uh, music and kind of the instrumentation that is used within that field um at the moment so 15 years ago uh, what i knew about oriental music was what my teacher teached me when I was doing, um, um, let's say, classical um, studying, because I started sure. piano at the age of five, and I studied a lot of arrangement and, um, and, 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 and oriental stuff, but as a European, as a French guy, you know, sure. basically, it took me a few years and maybe 200 uh, flights to Tunisia <laughs> to learn how to arrange and compose uh, real uh, oriental music. So it took it took some years. And you mentioned you met, met them in Tunis. So so you, uh, what is your impression of the music scene uh, when you went there for the first couple of times? What well, what kind of did you see there? Where you thought, okay, this is there is some potential within this this musical realm. Um, basically, if you are talking about metal business in Tunisia with Oriental influence. Unfortunately, there is no business. Okay. There is no business. The, there is no um, shop to buy CDs. There is no uh, mus uh, music schools. There is no school to teach you how to produce and export your music. There is nothing. Okay. And the only reason why Zeus Tunisian was doing some kind of metal, it's because the, the first... Um, uh, the father of of Malek, uh, the guitar player, uh, did his studying in the US and he discovered oh. metal scene in the US. So when he came back to Tunisia, he told his his, his son, uh, uh, "Are you interested in uh, playing guitar? Or let's try to do something." You know. So no, unfortunately, there is no uh, music business for metal. The only thing you can find in Tunisia is. Um, um, yeah, Arabic music made by old Arab Arabic guys. Sure. So nothing around metal, and yeah, and the metal scene there is is really small. I mean, there is maybe seven thousand metal heads there. Okay. Uh, each time we play Tunis, we play in front of seven thousand people. So <laughs> that's a close market, and that's <laughs> it. And and <laughs> unfortunately, it will not grow. I think. Um, well, why not? Because for Tunisian band, it's impossible to export your music. It's mm. impossible for many reasons. The first reason is it's forbidden to own euros. Uh -huh. It's forbidden to own a credit card. It's forbidden yeah. to almost everything. So if you have the chance to play with a band member, which is in Europe, it can help you. 
I mean, mm. to pay for flights, to pay for to to, to go to, to to see the record labels. But if you are a one hundred percent Tunisian man, unfortunately, it's it's impossible. And okay, and and we tried we tried for many years to 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 um, to give a little bit of help to to Tunisian um, musicians, but it's it's still really really difficult for them. Oh, that's that's very sad to hear. But uh, it's it's cool then that a band like Mirath exists, uh, at least to me. And I don't know if you've ever spo uh, spoken to the guys about this, but what is their drive? What is their passion to to do this? Because it sounds like it's not the easiest road to to choose. I mean, they they love music, and um, and that's it. And even if for them it's Every day, I mean, every day, every day, it's complicated. Uh, the mm. last tour we did in um, South America, for example, um, each time we needed to get on the flight, um, um, we, we were not allowed to to get mm. on the flight because of the green pass uh, green passports, and um, everything is same time complicated, more more complicated for them than for a regular band, but sure. they try to 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 find the energy to continue because of the love of music and also to prove that you can do something even if you are not born in the right country mm. i think I, th i think that's a very important um thing to realize because once it, something has been done and other people can see that it can be done then obviously the world has changed and and, and people can follow uh, in their footsteps so was there for you a moment? I, I believe you you were already involved from from Hope onwards, right? The first album, and you, you've been involved the entire time. Um, was there a turning point or or a breakthrough at some point? Uh, you think for the band? Um, yes, definitely. I mean, I so I started to to work uh, with the band with Hope. I was only the producer. I mean, okay. I just recorded and produced the songs, rearrange a bit. That's it. Um, the first album sold quite good for first album. I mean, mm. uh, we just found a little distribution distribution deal uh, with a small French company, and it was okay. Uh, and I decided to uh, invest more of my time, and I started to to compose for the band uh, for the second okay. album. It went a little bit better, and for the third album, I decided really to to compose by myself two three songs. Because I wanted to provide to the band the experience of composer I had, because I'm a little bit older, and what we saw is that the the sales um, have it, have been increased uh, for this third album. A way that we can consider maybe in the next future to make Miras a living, you know. Okay. But but what changed everything is um, is the. Um, the video clip of Believer. Mm. Um, when I told the guy, okay, the guys, okay, let's let's do a crazy video clip about uh, Prince of Persia stuff, um, uh, which costed so many money that we needed to do a crowdfunding for it because, of mm. course, with any money. Um, yeah, the the day we release it on the on on YouTube, it it changed everything because a um, lot of people around the world started to to discover the band through this uh, uh, strange uh, Perse of, uh, Prince of Persia uh, story. Right. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, and it helped us to 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 start to ring and uh, and to make it a more professional way. I mean, yeah, and I th I think it's really cool because I d I don't know if that's always been the case, but especially uh, in more recent years, it seems like the audience is more accepting of of kind of all kinds of different types of metal i mean there's a, a band from india called uh, bloody wood which is amazing i think and there's all these uh, bands that have their culture woven into the music and i think that's it is part of it i don't know if this is a good question but it's part of it also kind of uh trying to share the middle eastern sound or the as you mentioned the oriental kind of uh sound is, is that part of the idea behind the band or or is that just the way things happen in the in the studio and the creative process yeah yeah i, I think the the main uh the main idea is when you are born in tunisia 
surrounded by folkloric elements like darboka, dove, mizweed, uh, quarter tone, violin, um, it's easier for you. I mean, it's natural for you to, to mm. try to, 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 to compose this way because your brain is formatted this way. Um, for me, as a, as a pianist and, 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 and composer and, and, uh, and producer, it was really interesting and challenging for me to discover new stuff and to dig because uh, the best way to be a better musician is to discover new stuff. So sure. to practice new stuff. So uh, me, me willing to be a better musician and the, and the band members willing to express themselves through their uh, roots, uh, it became a total natural natural process. I mean, it's not intellectualized or whatever. It's just natural. Well, what have you, as a, as a composer and arranger, then learned? And maybe you just mentioned one thing, but something that you've learned about that type of music uh, compared to perhaps the Western music we're more more used to. What, what is one big diff difference or something that, that uh, stands out? Um, there are two main differences. The first difference is the elasticity of the rhythm. I mean, as a European guy or American guy or whatever, if you want to uh, write on a paper a rhythmical, rhythmical pattern, for example, ta, 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 you know that you are going to put your note, the dot, and blah, blah, blah. And in, 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 uh, in Africa and Middle East, uh, you have an elasticity where you can add extra milliseconds Mm. After it, it, you 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 end with something with an elasticity, which which makes you feeling that it's not accurate, but you are flying between all the measures, you know. And this is something you need to learn because it's not natural at all. Um, uh, there is a, a Moroccan pattern, for example, which is uh, Gnawa. Uh, if you want to play Gnawa, the, the principal rhythm of Gnawa, it's... And if you try to program this on Cubase or on Pro Tools, it's impossible because each bar, you need to add an extra few milliseconds. So, but it, 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 it provides a, a feeling of something that is over the top if, in terms of groove. You know, it's over sure. the groove. Sure. So but the, the main difference and, and the second main, of course, is the use of quarter tone uh, regarding the scales you are using. And okay. of course, it's totally different. Um, within Miras, we use sometimes quarter tone, but especially with uh, violins, because doing quarter tone with guitars, we tried, but you know, um, it's an instrument with a fret. I don't know the name in English, but the bars, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's really difficult to do quarter tone, but also quarter tone, you need to learn where to put the quarter tone. Mm -hmm. And it's something you can't learn when you are born in Europe, for example. Yeah, you need to do that for years and years and have the feel, right? Yep. One last question before we delve into uh, karma, but was there ever a thought of, well, let me put it differently. Was it, was it always a given that the band would sing in English? Um, the... the to, to to be honest, the band wanted to to sing one hundred percent English at the beginning. Okay. Uh, maybe because of the frustration to be Tunisian, or maybe a complex to be a Tunisian surrounded by European metalheads. I don't know, but they wanted to to do like the others mm. naturally, which is in fact a good idea because. I think it's important to, to for for the fans to understand what we want to to say. Sure. Um, but I, but I remember that for the first the second album, uh, the record label told us, "Could you please do several songs mixed with a mixture between English and uh, Tunisians, because uh, people want to discover your roots, and you mm. don't have to be shamed about your language or this kind of stuff." So we started to introduce. Tunisian uh, language and uh, and lyrics uh, since the second album. Okay, we, we we haven't done this for this last album, but for the previous album, it was uh, it was the case, and which is cool for the singer because it's your mother language, so it's right. really really uh, uh, easy to do it. But yeah, the main reason of the the English was yeah, um, it began with a complex inferiority complex. It's strange, but it's the true. 
Uh, but in fact, it's a good way to have people around the world uh, understanding what you are saying. So, yeah, I think you do open yourself up to to more of the world in the, in that sense. Um, so let's get get over to Karma because how does an album start then with the band does it start with you does it start with a certain does the band come come with a couple of songs or how, how do you how does a project like karma start um yeah generally it's it's start it's starting with me because they are okay. lazy <laughs> uh if if i'm in fact if i wait for the for the drummer or guitar player to to provide some songs it will never happen so okay. I, I need to they have good ideas, but I need to push hard. So I started to to work on a couple of songs, uh, and unfortunately we we had uh, COVID, uh, and and um, yeah, so, so we we were. It's it's important uh, for me to to uh, to explain this story around COVID because it changed the way we composed. Okay. So, uh, we we were touring uh, in Europe. Uh, the last gig of the tour was, uh, it was half of the tour, but the last gig we played was in Leipzig in Germany. Mm. And suddenly border closed, uh, like all the government come back to home and blah, blah, blah. So as a French guy, uh, I could make it in 24 hours to come back. Uh, but unfortunately for the three Tunisian members, uh, the Tunisian government didn't uh, bring some flights for them. Uh, okay. So they called me and they told me, Kev, we are stuck in France. Uh, what should we do? Uh, so I told them, okay, come to my tiny house and let's see, let's try to figure out a solution. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't find a solution. So they needed to stay for six months. Okay. It was impossible for them to come back in Tunisia. Impossible. Um, so I took this opportunity, even if, if it was difficult, because five guys plus my wife plus my uh, dog in a tiny house, it was a mess everywhere. Sure. Uh, but but I told the guys, yeah, let's try to to compose together a different way. Um, because generally for the previous album, all the process was very digital. I was providing an ID to Gmail and uh, there mm -hmm. recording something and it was really digital and not very natural. And uh, in fact, it was the first time we had the opportunity to be uh, together in the same room. So me having my piano and having a, 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 a singer in front of me and telling him, okay, can you try this? And and him to tell me, can you try this on the piano? So back and forth. Sure. So the, the, the direct consequence of having everybody in the same room is that I, I could we, we could um, um, try thousands of stuff. Very, a lot, a lot of stuff, and we composed a lot of songs. And yeah, and 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 this album Karma, I mean, is some some bands would tell you would tell you, oh, the our last album is the best, blah blah blah. I I think it's bullshit, and it it, it makes no sense to 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 tell this. But I, I can assure that this album is different because of the, the composing process, because mm. everything uh, because of COVID, uh, real. Five real musicians in the same room to compose together, uh, so you you need less arrangement, you need less anything because uh, everything you can feel everything real time with with everybody. So yeah, everything, and 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 when they came back, the the album was composed. So we only need it after all to to record it. Okay, but that's that's pretty cool because that means um, even though it was difficult to, for for you and your wife and and the situation, I mean, working on the album must have been a lot easier and and quicker. Um, one thing I really like about the album, and you mentioned earlier, every, everything you do with the band, uh, it can be difficult, especially touring and all that stuff, um, but. The message in most of the songs is very uh, optimistic. It's very uh, powerful, resilient, uh, a lot of determination. When did that become clear in the in the process? When, when did that rise to the top, or is that always something that that's uh, important? It's, it's natural because um, all the songs of Miras uh, try to keep a positive attitude. Because um, I mean, the it's 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 a way to to heal. The band and to mm. heal, especially the three Tunisian members, because with everything they face every day, uh, you have two options. The first option is to get depressed and mm. everything sure. is finished, or to try to fight and uh, and to see life with a, a good spirit, you know, a good attitude. And um, 
and the band is uh, willing to keep this positive attitude despite the all the trouble they have of discrimination of racism of uh, sure. many things and as it's really natural to do this i'm pretty sure that people that are facing the same issues can recognize themselves uh, through the lyrics so yeah M mira's lyrics and karma lyrics are about many subjects where we we struggled and we try to to keep it positive yeah i think that's really really cool to hear and for instance in wheel of time i wrote down rise above and stay alive those are very very powerful messages i think and um and in heroes for instance we all have to take a stand those, the, those kind of things is it are lyrics written collectively or is it the, is that the one person that does that how are kind of the themes and the lyrics written um for the theme of the songs we uh discuss together okay. uh, and zair is providing the most insight about it i mean the the most information and we provide all this information to let's say real lyricist but because we we, we are not and um for for karma we worked with uh, amen jawadi who, who um, mm. uh, wrote the lyrics of our previous albums but also uh, britney slays uh, from the band uh, unleash the archers uh, which she she understood what what it was all about and um in make it and she made it very quick to uh to write everything i mean she she understood the theme what we wanted to 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 to, to talk, talk about and especially she's a kind of genius to find the appropriate word to mm. match the tonal inflection of the singer because sure. uh if you are singing an i note you you can't sing uh uh e it's 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 easier to to sing an a or this kind of stuff so she adapt uh all the world uh, uh depending the context of the of the vocal uh, elements and uh, she did it great i mean oh yeah that's that's amazing and it's something to think about that the the tonality and the the pronunciation of certain words there are important as well in how, how they fit within the song um what i what i from listening to the album what i feel it's very as i mentioned the word word powerful it's it's it sounds very epic this music to me and for, uh, i don't know if this is your side but um if we if we talk about the arrangements and especially the strings and those kind of things uh, those elements uh, and the layering of of sounds and, and even the guitar layering um what are the challenges and what, what is your approach to to uh, doing those kind of things especially on this album karma um yeah it depends the instrument for example for the brass and violins uh generally i start with a, a single monophonic line like i just i have just the idea of the theme mm. and when i start the arrangement of this theme um i try to uh to choose the right sound depending on the context. And it's really difficult. For example, um, um, I need to, to work on many things, the, pano the panoramic, uh, the volumes, the reverbs. Mm. Uh, when something needed to be fast, uh, I use uh, violins. When uh, I need something percussive, but also low, I, I am using brass together with, uh, with um, uh, timpanis, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, belt, this kind of stuff, and um, the more the guitar is present, the lower are the uh, arrangements, and the more the guitar bass is basic with not too much notes, the more I can put on the top of it some arrangement, sure. and it it's a process. I I it's impossible to describe. This is something <laughs> I, I I feel. Um, when I feel an instrument is necessary, I, I'm just writing this instrument, but uh, I couldn't explain the the process. No, but I really like the di dynamics. For instance, if we the second song into the light, there's this uh, instrumental breakdown kind of with with the piano and the strings over the top, and I mean, it, it sounds so beautiful. So the, uh, that kind of weaving every uh, everything together to make this this this. Uh, yeah, this this cohesive song is very very impressive. I think. What what is um, 
for you and the rest of the guys, what, what is the, I don't know if this is, is the right way to phrase it, but what is the aim, so to say, with, with the music? What do you do? For instance, with this album now, Karma coming out, what do you hope they can do? Is it, is it um, uh, trying to tour again, to going back to uh, Europe? Or what is the aim, so to say? There, there are many aims. Uh, the first is to do music for people and not for ourselves. Mm. Of course, we do some, we compose some parts for ourselves. For example, Into the Light, uh, if you listen to the piano part, it was a challenge to myself. I mean, the, okay. the, this piano part to my, to myself is, uh, from my point of view, is so difficult that I needed to practice it three months, okay. and I was not even sure I could make it. So it was kind of challenge to be a better pianist. So uh, I composed everything on Cubase, and uh, after I realized when I wrote all the notes that it was really fast, and I needed to, to work hard, mm. to make it it happen. So it it's a it's something I did I, I did for me. But most of the time, uh, we do music for for listeners because the best scenario for us is to perform the songs on live performance and to see and feel the, the joyness of the people uh enjoying real time the the songs with you and um and the i think the more uh we will tour the more we will try to provide some things that fit uh people and can make them happy sure and uh, and yeah and by experience for example if your song is too complicated it's difficult to make it sound good live if it's too, too proggy uh, too proggy um so it's difficult to have a good experience with the fans so with this kind of iteration on stage mm -hmm. uh we, we we did little bit simpler songs on this uh album for example but the feedback of the fan is everything in the in the composing process. Yeah, talking about the fans because uh, obviously here in Europe uh, we are we have a lot of uh, people who who were either born in uh, the Middle East or or have, uh, have parents who were born in, in in different parts of the world. Uh, what have you noticed from the fans and and do kind of people with that heritage appreciate it a little bit more or that do they come up to you and then say for instance oh it's so great to hear kind of uh, middle eastern music represented and that kind of yeah, stuff or... definitely and i think even that even people that don't like our music which mm. are from tunisia for example <laughs> will try to go uh, see okay. us okay. because it's it's kind of a heritage and as miras is for the moment the first band who could make it internationally they are so proud of it that mm. they try to support the band as yeah as you as big as they as they can you know so yeah we have, we have two different kind of, of fans the european people who disc we are we are discovering a true our music new way of composing and of course all the fans from uh, from uh, arabic countries which are very proud um because you know the the image of of uh, Berberian people or people from uh, Middle East is not as good as we could expect in um, in in Europe, and there there are a lot of amalgams. So uh, having three Tunisian members doing metal is surprising, and uh, and yeah, a lot of people are interested in this because uh, it gives uh, another aspect of what you can do when you are born there. So. Yeah, that, I think it's really cool, and I hope uh, it inspires a lot of people from from that part of the world to pick up a guitar or to to think, hey, I can maybe uh, start a band as well. Um, last question: the album is called Karma. Uh, when was the de decision made to call it that? The name was found maybe ten years ago. Okay. Uh, by by Zaher, who told me I would love to to have an album called Karma. Um. For, for this album, when we realized that karma was the 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 topic of all the lyrics, I mean, when everything was written and we could sp speak about discrimination, climate change, racism, failure on life in life, um, the the best single word to represent all of this was was karma. And I told there, yeah, let's take this name because it's representing so good all the. All the all the theme of the of the of the lyrics, um, and yeah, you you we 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 choose this 
along with uh, the rotten apple on the cover. I mean, if you see the, the cover, the, the, the beautiful girl is not that important, let's say. <laughs> but the, the, the most important element is um, the, the, the beautiful apple, ap uh, apple in the uh, outside and rotten in the inside. And it's also represent karma and the, and the theme of the, of the songs. Excellent. Kevin, may I thank you so much for talking uh, to me about the album, about everything? Yeah, thank you very much, man.